This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series, continuing our look at special systems design, talking about fire alarms in particular, uh, and then within those systems, we're going to be looking at notification devices within fire alarm systems. So as we talked about before, fire alarm control panel, and then there's initiating devices we talked about last time, and notification devices, which we're going to uh, wrap up with today. Uh, notification devices are devices that give a notification to either the system monitor, the general public, and or the fire department that something wrong or of concern is being detected by the fire alarm system. One of the most common notification devices is the strobe light. This is a device that is located along the egress path that gives a vis visible notification or visual notification that there is a problem. So this is a flashing light. You may have seen this. Uh, in the past. So one thing uh, you're going to want to be aware of here, let's see if I can get this to work. Hold on. Uh, anyway, that little 15, I don't know if you can see it there uh, at the bottom. That's a, you can change the candela rating for this. We'll look at that in just a minute. So these devices are rated in candela. The fire alarm code NFPA 72 has certain requirements for candela per square foot that must be met. Uh, these devices are always required in public restrooms and should be viewable in public and egress areas. Uh, one side note is that if you have a large area that requires multiple strobes, they must be synchronized to strobe together or they can cause epileptic seizures. So, uh, this is something they found out early on when they started putting strobes in, in large areas, you know, where you could see multiple strobes at one time. For some reason, if they don't fire all together, if, uh, if it's random or, or unsynchronized, people with epilepsy are likely to uh, have a seizure because of that. So here's an example of a layout. Um, uh, you can see here, let's see. For you know just a straight room, uh, you need to put them like every 30 meters, um, and you got to be within usually, usually it's within uh, 15 feet of uh, egress end of hall. Uh, you know if you have a, a hallway that uh, is not straight, then you've got to place them maybe even closer, uh, like these guys here, to uh, ensure that it's visible from all ways. If you just had these ones on the end, you know once you were in this area here you might not have line of sight to either one of those. So got to make sure and have full coverage. Uh, if you look at the FPA 72, they uh, give you some criteria for what the candela rating has to be and for how many strobes you're using. So uh, in this case, if you had like a, uh, this case here, if you had like a 20 by 20 room, uh, you could do it with one strobe. Uh, 15 candela. If you get up into larger rooms, let's say like a, a, a let's get a big one like 80 here, 80 by 80. You could put one strobe light of 240 candela. Good luck finding one of those. I've never seen one. Uh, or you could use two that are both rated for 135 places at each end. I have seen those. Uh, probably more common though is this guy down here, the 60 uh, candela. I have four of them, probably one on each wall. So this kind of gives you some, some guidelines and rules of thumb of what you got to do to meet code for your candela ratings. Uh, another form of notification is the horn. Uh, so this is a device that's located along the egress path that gives an audible notification that there's a problem. Uh, these devices are rated in decibels and the fire alarm code has certain requirements for spacing for these devices as well. Many times you'll see a combination horn strobe, but the problem is everywhere you need a strobe, you don't necessarily need a horn, and you don't want to overdo it on the horn because it can make it pretty unbearable and painful uh, if, you're, if you're doing that. One other thing you need to keep in mind is we don't put these in stairwells. <coughs> Most fire marshals uh, forbid it because they don't want that stairwell to become confusing and unbearable and not be able to communicate while you're coming down the stairs. So if you have horns and strobes going off in there, it could cause a lot of confusion. Again, like I mentioned, the combination horn strobe device. So these are what some of these will look like. Uh, you'll notice 
Uh, it has the strobe here, but it also has the uh, openings for the speakers. Same thing over here. Again, fire de de notification devices never go in stairwells. Well, all young designers always try to do that. While notification devices can be installed in or on ceilings, uh, the code limits that height to 30 feet. So you can't mount these devices up higher than 30 feet. So if you had an area that I've seen this done that had a 40 foot ceiling, you would have to uh, put a stem down to where a 10 foot stem if you're actually going to put a device uh, in the middle of the room so that it doesn't go above that 30 foot mark. Uh, notification devices require power, which can be provided by the fire alarm control panel within reason. For larger buildings, uh, you're going to see these remote power supplies that are installed uh, to power a greater number of devices, and these are called NAC units. Uh, so I think they're notification, uh, I can't remember what NAC stands for now. You can look it up though. Another critical part of fire alarm design is to ensure that the correct size batteries are installed. We talked about this earlier. So battery calculations should be required from the fire alarm supplier and approved by the EE. And this will be for the control panel and for each of these NAC uh, boxes throughout the building. They'll all have batteries in them to make sure the, the devices are backed up.